the motions that we have to do. Okay. We are now recording. Okay. I'm Phyllis Walker Ford, and today is September 9th, 2021, and this is the African American History Inventory Committee meeting. Phyllis, can I interrupt on September 14th? Yeah, thank you. That's what I was just looking at. Why do I say September 9th? Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> It's the ninth month, but <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. So you you see how my day is going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the AAHI committee needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each committee member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Okay, Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy in Springfield District. I mean, Braddock District in Springfield. Well, <laughs> <laughs> a long yes. Barbara Nave. <laughs> Barbara Nave in Reston. <laughs> Tammy Manorino. Tammy Manorino in Mount Vernon District. Ann Stunts. I'm here, Ann Stunts in uh, Vienna, Virginia. Esther McCullough. I'll come back to her. Carol Herrick. Carol Herrick, McLean, Virginia, Drainsville District. Robert Peters. Cheryl Repetti. <clears throat> Cheryl, I see you, but I don't hear you. We're not. You should. Oh, we're not Cheryl, hearing you. Not hearing you? Okay. Now, now we got you. Now you got me. Okay. Here Sorry. Right. Yeah, I was hitting you. the wrong button, I guess. Um, so Cheryl Rapetti, uh, Centerville in Sully District. Okay. Sue Kovac Schumann. Sue Kovac Schumann, Mantu in Providence District. Lynn Garvey Hodge. Okay. Liz Kroll. Liz Kroll in Alexandria. Uh, Chris Babishak has a staff meeting, so he's not going to be with us. Uh, Subi Medi. Denise Tressel. And Denise had to take a phone call, but she will be with us. Uh, David Meyer. Did I miss anyone? It looks like we have a okay. fourth calling user, so I'm going to unmute them. And uh, to the new uh, calling user, can you introduce yourself? Uh, this is Barbara Peters. I didn't understand a word. <laughs> can you hear us? <laughs> Hi, I, I, I can hear you now, yes. Um, as usual, I can come in as an attendee, but I cannot come in as you know, a member of this panel, and I don't understand what the problem is, but um, I'm here now. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay, at this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to Mary, our co-chair, so that I may make the appropriate motions. I move that the AAHI committee certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, second, I move that the AAHI committee certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this committee and the public to physically attend this meeting in person and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the uh, committee conduct this meeting electronically 
through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by calling 1-844-621-3956 and entering access code 2347-559-8310. So moved. I yes, saw move Mary Lipsy. Yeah. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Finally, I move that the AAHI committee certify that the matters on this on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself are necessary for committee for continu continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the committee's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second. Okay. And all in favor of that motion. Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Here's your gavel back. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today and we'll get started and let me just start by saying the capstone team has been selected and they will be contacting us later this week. So we'll have more information on who the team is and we'll get started with them. Sounds like okay. good things. Um, and I'm going to uh, Denise is going to uh, come in later on because she has uh, something that she wants to discuss. Um, Sue, you had a question uh, yesterday about oh. um, cemeteries and churches. So yeah. do you, do you want to go ahead and discuss that? Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I wasn't really um, absolutely clear if we should be doing anything ourselves by district and cemeteries and churches and Mary, that was a question that I had for you. Um, I'm adding them as I do templates, like if I'm doing the um, uh, a community like Burke, I will add the church and cemeteries at the same time in a template. Um, that's an option if you want to do it that way, or if you want to do a separate template for each one, that's fine too. So, so but it, should I be doing that for Providence District? They should be recorded somewhere with your templates, yes. Okay, that's all I need. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so and your second question was uh, regarding public historian. Well, yeah, that was something else. Um, there are some people who or public historians and have their niche area. And um, I, I, my question was to Phyllis, should that be, should that person be regarded as a resource, especially because they've done a lot of things? Because what I found is when I'm doing a template and mentioning certain things, that person keeps coming up. It's so I, I suppose that person is also a resource and I'll put that person on a template. But you know that there's a handful perhaps of things like that. It, how, about just, it? um, how about as a I'm source? I'm going to submit it that way and see what the editing side. So how, how a about person, putting them as a but, source? And the research they're doing, oh, and they have videos and, and a lot of things. I was saying, well, how about put them as I'm a sorry, source? Say it again, Mary. I couldn't. How about putting them as a source? I've been putting sources at the bottom of my templates. Just if as I, a source, but not as yeah. a source. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, uh, but not as a resource separately. That's what I'm questioning. Okay, gotcha. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. That's that's what I thought too. I'm just plugging away on this and <laughs> trying to get it, you know, kind of in a fashion where I can hand it off to someone else to look at and tell me what I what I need to redo before the deadline. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mary, um, do you want to update on the uh, county history contest and right. your A and the uh, general resources. Right. Okay. I had a meeting uh, 
oh, it seems like a month ago, but I guess it was last week, of, of the leaders of the contest curriculum and communication uh, committees for the uh, contest. And it was a very productive uh, meeting. One of the things I did uh, suggest to them is that we come up with a better title for that, you know, because um, when we say marker contest, then people are going to think that the winners are going to have a marker. And so we left it as that. They said that was a good idea. So I don't know what's going to come from that, but that was a suggestion I had. It was very, I thought on my part, it was very productive because uh, I went through and explained the two different types of markers and uh, you know what they look like, uh, et cetera. And we discussed how does a student um, fill out a submission? Uh, are they going to be concentrating on one marker or the other? Uh, do they um, get to suggest what they want to do? We also, uh, talked about location and you know of course I explained the history commission uh, marker is um, normally you know uh, distinguishing a location a specific location associated with an event or um, a battle or whatever it is uh, there was a lot of discussion and we're meeting again next week because we came up with all these ideas and we're going to go through them again um, one person suggested, would it be possible to like put the markers in a in one location, like as a trail or something like that, or at the government center, or I said at the courthouse. Uh, but as we were talking about the government center later on, I started thinking about the um, walking trail behind the uh, government center. If you've ever been, sat in that uh, little, um, what do you call it? Or, auditorium out there, you're looking out the windows and there's this huge expanse of land with a trail on it. Phyllis was concerned that they may be doing construction back there, but I got all excited because I thought, gosh, that would be perfect to bring field trips of kids in there. You know, if the, if the markers were there and you could easily add more markers through the years, et cetera. So anyway, nothing's been decided. We were still brainstorming, you know, uh, uh, et cetera. So, uh, we started uh, talking about the submission and looking at Northrum's ideas. Um, they did want it to uh, the submission to accommodate both styles of markers because Supervisor Palchek has uh, kept on saying that she would love to have both styles of markers and um, what it would look like. We also agreed that we needed to have a type of a uh, rubric uh, for judging uh, for the um, markers so that the voting committee can, you know, be on the same page as they are looking at that. And uh, so then they said, well, who's going to write these? Well, I didn't say anything, <laughs> but then I was asked. So I have written up a, a draft contact form and brief instructions. I mean, if you look at Northrum's, basically there's a date and a list of things that they should uh, send with a couple of sentences uh, included with it. So I came up with a, a submission idea and a rubric, which I have sent off to Ramona Carroll. And um, so it, it's it's definitely in draft form, but what I did for the submission again, this is not in concrete, so I'm just telling you my ideas. I had them in, uh, identify the person to be nominated, the date of birth, and again, in the directions that say if known or approximately or you know whatever they can find, where did the person live, how would the person's successes and or lifetime be described, how should the person be remembered, any additional important information, Suggestion for a location of the marker, the type of marker you would choose, the sources you used, and then optional list examples of graphics like maps or photos or whatever 
that uh, could be included in the marker and uh, where they might be found. So the source for those. So that's the idea of the submission and the rubric just about takes each one of these little questions and puts it there and uh, the judge would um, judge them for excellent, good, fair, or poor. Um, and usually in rubrics, they get very detailed in what to expect with each one of those um, categories. I did not do that. Um, I'm hoping that this would be an open-ended type of thing and that it's just like a gut reaction uh, since they're not going to be, uh, the students aren't going to be writing it. We're just reacting to the idea of who the person is and the submission. So anyway, um, that's basically what I um, am working on. Do you have any questions about that? Yes. Okay. This is Barbara. <laughs> Who is going to be doing the writing? <laughs> that was a question we did not answer <laughs> at the meeting. And I did not volunteer. So I Good. don't know. Well, we know that that writing can take months. Yes. <laughs> of research, documentation, and wordsmithing. Right. Yes, I understand. Well, they have. Also, they have realized that uh, their timeline of having even markers in by uh, next September, a year from now, may not be realistic. Okay, so they're not. Uh, it's going to be more of you know getting in your submissions, and what I put in the directions is that uh, nominees whose submissions are accepted will be notified by such and such date, and that's it. You know, you're not a winner. You're not, you know, your your nomination has been uh, accepted. Uh, so again, that this is just my draft, and and we'll see where it goes uh, from there. Anything else, uh, Mary? This is Carol. Yeah. Um, I would be happy to work on the wording of an actual marker um, with someone else. Okay. Anyway, put my name in okay. your head. All right. I mean, it has to end up being the history commission in, in some way because it's our it's our marker program, right? Unless they do the wayside markers. You know, but we would so still want to, you know, back. They're getting them. options to choose between the two of them. But I have Either always I have way. suggested. I'm sorry. Either way, I'll be happy to. Um, okay. Yeah. I originally suggested to REA and, and Supervisor Palachek, if they are wayside markers, that the History Commission should review the text and maybe make suggestions. And that, you know, that, that seemed okay. Who's the authority for the wayside markers? We're going to have to be Mary. Mary. I mean, I, I don't see who else would be. Well, that's what I'm saying that we would review them, but what the difference is, is that we're not going to be uh, have the same standards as the history commission does. In oh, other words, we, we can accept the oral traditions and folklore and that's the way the wayside markers. Uh, they're not all that way, but many are. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I mean, there's one, uh, the Civil War Trails has a poem about uh, Mosby uh, killing uh, the pastor Reed. I think his last name was Reed in Vienna. Yeah. And um, that you wouldn't find on the History Commission marker. That's just an example. Hmm. Are there any other questions about it? Um, no, another sounds, thank you, Mary. Sounds like a really productive meeting. Um, that I I like that there's like this out of the box thinking that's you know maybe all of the markers are in one location. Um, kind of what popped into my head too when you said that, and I was like, well, maybe maybe it could be a traveling <laughs> display even where it's in lo one location at one time and then it goes to another location so that it you know um, so that it can get to everybody. Um, Almost like the way um, 
you know, the, um, the AIDS quilt went around or, you know, um, something of that just kind of popped in my head, but, um, but it sounds like a really, like really productive and, and you're getting there. There's a lot to get through, but it sounds like you right. guys are hitting all of the things you need to talk about. So it's great. That's why the contest meeting is not meeting on Monday. We decide because I've been saying all along before the contest committee meets. The people who are leading this thing has got to be on the same page. Yeah, so we met, we met last week and we're going to meet on the uh, 23rd again. Uh, yeah. So, um, but that's just the you know, four of us. Yes. My, um, can you guys hear me? I'm yes. frozen on my end. Yes. Um, I, I like the idea of a trail because of the ease of seeing it, but I love the site specific nature of markers too right so that's a balance isn't it it's something right. to think about we we were trying to do we did a temporary marker program in vienna for liberty amendments month and we realized we had all these things we wanted to say about the 13th 14th 15th and 19th amendments but we didn't have any much site specific so we did just do, do trails and parks and things about just generic information and and quizzes and things just on you know yard signs that that sort of thing and that was a lot of fun and um and but it's very di different you know, it's, um, it wasn't, I, I love, I, I was sorry. And I, my goal is to find, find some more site specific stuff when we do it next year. Cause I, I think that's also wonderful. What, what I was hearing when you were telling me, it's like, oh, well, we actually need to do two copies of each one. So one site specific when possible, and then one traveling set. Or three, one for a, uh, uh, the trail at the government center, one for a traveling set, and one site specific. I mean, just to add to the complexity of the pro program. Sorry, but I, I don't know if you all remember from the, in the nineteen seventies. I'm sorry. I just the first oh, morning on this side. Something. I just love that part. So that's me. In the 1970s, the state had a traveling Civil War like trailer. Um, like, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like a trailer, and they would bring them to schools, and I had them uh, bring them to Lake, bring it to Lake Braddock, and my kids every period we went out, and it was all about the Civil War inside. And, you know, it was like a little field trip, but the kids didn't have to leave school. Uh, and it was wonderful. The, the whole trailer was all about Virginia and the Civil War. Um, and it lasted like for a couple of years and then, you know, uh, went away. I mean, if we really want to think out. We did the box, that, Mary. We me? did that. Um, it was that the history mobile um, was all over the county and all the state for the sesquicentennial for those five oh, years. Yeah, it came to Vienna right. a couple times because it changed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're wonderful. Yeah, I, I like that in that, um, you know, just yeah. some, you know, some kids aren't going to, you know, have the opportunity to venture out of their community and see some of the other markers from the other areas. Um, yeah, so, so, and, you know, you hate to bite off too much, but maybe there's a way to do a little of both. Um, I don't know. Well, the, you know, I don't know what the expense would be, but, you know, yeah. uh, that, that's a big if <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, I don't have a stake in this, I'm not, not on the committee, but I really think that from the whole public history perspective, something like what you're suggesting with something mobile makes big sense. It just will take the history to the students. We can't expect that they're going to want to get this otherwise. And, and as far as a bus and such, my goodness, that just sounds expensive. I don't know how that was done before, but we should probably look at that, take it to them. Yeah, this is as well, I can bring it up. I finally got in. So 
count me attending. Yay. Hi, Esther. <laughs> but yeah, traveling, great. Is a good traveling uh, yeah. educational mobile. <laughs> it, it could be something, you know, that could be, you know, set up in, in the cafeteria for, you know, a week or two at, at each school or, you know, something like that. Um, it, it doesn't have to be something on on wheels necessarily, but, you know, every school has a cafeteria, every school has a library. Um, you know, so maybe maybe it's something that's, you know, a little bit more portable, I guess. I know that the libraries have traveling exhibits. I, I know Chris isn't on the um, uh, meeting right now, but I, I've heard them, you know, they have exhibits that travel from library to library. And I don't know how, you know, who uh, manages that, but that's another mm. you know, possibility. And yeah. plus the fact, if you set it, set it up, uh, you could, you know, like do one year, you know, the nominations and the next year, the next nominations, and then you could recycle, you know, like in, uh, some others and, or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll bring it up just as a, uh, out, out of the box, uh, thoughts here. You know, I like you guys are doing a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, so any other questions about that? No. Okay. No. All right. Um, I've um, been working on the resources, as you know, and uh, I've got about 30 pages and I sent it, you know, every time I send it, I put draft on this and I sent it to Chris Barbershock for some uh, review. And uh, he has given me some suggestions and I've sent him an email saying, what about this? I think I'm going to go back and make two separate lists. One list will be what called general resources, and that'll be the various collections, court records, school records, that type of stuff. While the other section will be research topics. So that would be the families and the individuals, churches, cemeteries, communities, schools, uh, and all that. So I'm waiting for him to come back and say, you know, what he thinks about that idea. But I do realize as I was looking at these 30 pages, it is very much overwhelming for anybody to start, you know, weeding through it. So this might make it easier, uh, you know, if they want to have something that applies to all of Fairfax County or even to Virginia that go to general resources and the more specific things would be under research topics. And I'm still finding stuff I'm <laughs> just, I'm just and taking some time off. For you, Mary. Okay, well, send it to me whenever you got it, Esther. Okay. Okay. So. Now he, Mary, he suggests. You're... Go ahead. I, I was just going to say your general resources um, listings have gone out to some of the um, high school teachers who are yeah. teaching the uh, the new African American history class that started. Uh, this school year. Okay. Well, I've been so, sending it every time I send it, I say it's a draft, you know, and it'll never be complete. But um, uh, yeah, I don't mind. You know, I've, I've, I've sent it to some people who are doing research on African American cemeteries and uh, stuff like that. Uh, I just want it to be a usable top, you know, usable group of uh, sources for people. So whatever I can make it as easy as possible. You know? Um, what is that um, African American history class? That's what I was just going to ask. What grade levels is that? Will that be? Is they just it's, it's a high school. Um, it's a high school course, and it's an elective. So there are some seniors, some eleventh grade, and some tenth grade uh, that are that are signing up for it. Mm -hmm. I've talked to um, a teacher at South County High and a teacher at West Springfield, and there's a teacher at Langley uh, who's also teaching it this year. Mm. Cool. And they don't seem to be communicating with each other to, <laughs> to, say, to say that there's one group of high school teachers that are teaching it. So I'm trying to work to find out what teachers are actually doing it in what high schools. Well, is it, Phyllis, Phyllis, I thought you said South Lakes was as well. 
This it's, is Barbara. It's South County. Oh, but not South Lakes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I, um, you know, it would be. I, I don't you know. Say, I haven't heard. Did from you say South Madison? County. Madison. Yeah, did. Um, I know someone came in the class. I think Madison did it last year. Hmm. Christine Powell. I think Madison did it with the state um, pilot. But this, but now Fairfax County has adopted it in the high schools. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it could be a dual enrollment, you know, with um, Nova. I mean, they must have an African American history course at Nova that they could do dual enrollment and right. get college credit, right. and then also have the um, the standard curriculum that they could all draw from. Well, they, it seems that Fairfax County has cr has created its own curriculum during Ooh. this this past summer, and. Uh, the class requires a that each student do a project, and that project is a research project. Nice. So the resource list is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so as commissioners, you may be getting um, uh, contacted by a high school teacher who is looking for African American history in, in their areas, in your each area. Well, I need to talk to West Potomac and see if they're going to offer the class. Yes. <laughs> they should. Um, yeah, with all the history around here, for sure they should. Mm. Mary, I have yes. a question about markers. I only saw history uh, markers from our group. Will we have other markers listed that were installed by other groups. I have at the at the very end. I have uh, history commission, Civil War trails, and state markers. I believe. Yep. Okay. For instance, yeah. First Baptist has a marker in Vienna that was was put up by the builder when he got the land. Okay. So, I, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that unless it's on. Historical marker database, um, which is contributory. Okay. Yeah, but that, you can, that's the point. Are we going to list those? I think you should put them in with your template. That's what okay. I've been doing. It's, it's in Vienna, so it's not even in my district. Oh, okay. How are we covering Vienna? And Anna, are you doing Vienna? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's yes, no reason because it's not part to. of Hunter it's, because it's Hunter. It's part of Hunter Mill District. Vienna. Then I should send this to you. And a cemetery too that I didn't see. Which one was that, Esther? It's uh, on Lewis Street. I think it was owned by a Carter family. I don't know what they called it. There is a Carter Family Cemetery, and I thought I had it in the list, but I'll check and see. Okay. Yeah, we have a we have a few little markers, um, but we're including all of everything that we know of. I was just I'm going to send to Phyllis and Denise um, a short video description of the course that Madison's it's the the course that Madison's doing. Um, it's a 20 minute. I said it's short. It's a 20. It's a it's a little longer than that, so um, so that'll be fun to see. And if you want to share that with everybody, so and I, yeah, and I, and I know a young woman who's taking the course, so that'll be good to stay on top of what they're up to. Okay. Thanks, Anne. Hi, Denise. Okay, if there, if there are no more questions on the marker side, then Denise has, has something she wants to discuss. Thank you, Phyllis. And I do apologize. I got um, called into a meeting, um, a, 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 a competing meeting. So um, thank you for allowing me to join the meeting and talk to you about um, some, a little good news that we got from the state. Uh, we, as you know, the history commission was supporting the African American reconnaissance uh, level survey 
of sites uh, countywide. And I've forgotten exactly how much you all uh, put up for the survey, but it was, you know, it, it was a, a good um, investment for, for the History Commission, and I do appreciate it. Um, the Architectural Review Board also uh, contributed money and DPD contributed money, and then we got a strict state matching grant. So we have this nice pot of money and they went out and they solicited uh, five different consultants and two, the top two um, consultants came back under budget. So oh, what that good. means is that we can expand our scope. Um, and I reached out to Phyllis and Mary to see if they, um, if they could look over the scope and see if there's any um, communities that we missed or um, individual resources within communities that we missed. So there are two different lists. There's um, a list of individual resources and a list of, uh, let's see what we call it. They, they'd be considered districts, but I think we're calling them I think we're calling them, let's see, object to include the call it districts, or we're calling them districts. So these would be communities, and that would include, just to give you a sense of um, what we're talking about, Akatink, uh, Bailey's Crossroads, uh, Bull Run, which was called Horton Town, uh, the Sideburn community in Burke, Cartersville, Chantilly. So, so kind of larger communities or um, individual resources. Um, and what I'd like to do, if this sounds reasonable to Phyllis and Mary, is maybe send the scope to the um, committee members here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting a, a nod. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, okay, great. Uh, and just have you all look over the identified individual resources. You'll see there are two lists um, or communities and see if there's anything that we're missing. And of course, if there is, please let me know. Um, and then any place that you think maybe deserves um, a little more intensive survey. So, for instance, we we know Gum Springs um, has a lot of uh, extant buildings in it. So we know that that's a, a community that has a, um, more than one uh, architectural resource. However, Gov Springs has its own survey, so that's going to be taken care of in a, in a different study. So Gum Springs would not be the place to identify, but I'm thinking that there might be Maryfield, for instance, I think had, you know, many different communities kind of, you know, clustered around, um, the, around the location of Maryfield. And there might be things that I'm missing, that I missed, um, uh, individual resources that um, didn't get listed that we can put in our survey to be looked at by the consultant. So um, there, Maryfield is just one example, but there might be other places. You all know the county far better than I do, and you certainly know your backyards better than anybody else. Um, so if you could take a look at the list, and then um, unfortunately it has to be a quick turnaround because uh, we're about, they're about ready to sign contracts. So they just want to know anything else that we need to add to this. Um, since we do have this little, little bit of extra money. And uh, if you could get it back to me by Friday, uh, you know, so I could get back to the state by Monday. Does that sound reasonable? I see Mary. Um, yeah, I just have questions because I'm finding some more communities that I did not have on the list. One is in the Cub Run area. And I have information they called it gate post. And I, uh, Phyllis and I have been working, trying to find more information about it. So, I mean, I hate to send somebody out on a wild goose chase. If there's nothing, if it doesn't there. exist anymore, yeah. right. gate post is, uh, maybe what, uh, what Denise just described as Horton town. Um, so yeah, I have a reference that refers to it as gate post, but, um, it may be. You know, I've heard Horton Town many, many years ago. One of my professors mentioned it, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a source for that. So I, I'm in, I, if if Denise wasn't going to offer to send that around, I was going to ask for it. <laughs> um, so you know, that might be something we have to sort of piece together with that particular one. I right. Think Jeff, I think Jeff Clark mentioned Horton Town. I have to go back and look at his emails. Um, <laughs> 
The other one is Hughesville, which is right at the intersection of Braddock Road and the Parkway. And uh, there was a Hughesville school mm -hmm. and then a, a community. And then I found out that Minnie Beckwith Hughes home is still there, as far as oh. I can tell. I need to drive down the road to see if I can see it because I put the address in and there's trees all in front of it. Yeah. But I thought that's the house I've been looking at all the times I go down Braddock Road towards the parkway. So if I have a chance, well, I have to get it to you by Friday, huh? Well, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Mary, you could you could Thank identify you. it and and say that you think that the house still exists and that would be the the uh, up to the consultant to go out and okay. find the house. All right. Yeah. Yep. Because um, I have uh, a man's will that he described uh, living in Hughesville, and then I have uh, Jeff Clark's information about the school and the community. Yeah, uh, that's so. that's great. That's perfect. Okay. That's exactly what I'm I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay, I need to and put I it on my list. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. I think Car Carol, were you chiming in? I haven't said anything. Okay, sorry. It's it's uh, without without a picture. It's hard to hard to tell. I got you. I got you. Well, and I'm assuming that um, Akatink and Woodlawn was kind of meant to be the same area. Um, let me see if I've got those separated out. And then there's also like the uh, the Quanda Road area. Um, there's a little cutout in the West Potomac parking lot that is, you know, where some of the Quander family lived. And, you know, it was interesting because they've redone the parking lots in the last year and people are saying like, you know, why don't they just buy those people out? And it was like, wait, wait, you don't understand the history. Um, and then Stokes Lane and a lot of, I was going to say a lot of the land has been sold and so different people are living there. So I don't know what's left of the original homes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. So I have. Yeah. I, I identified Springbank um, with the Quander Association, uh, mm -hmm. but if there's more than Springbank, Tammy, that would be something that you could yeah, give some, some feedback for that. that yeah. We probably yeah. need to, you know, just sort of need to point out. Um, yeah, places. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, in Akatink, I have Akatink Methodist Church in Cemetery, Fort Belvoir. Oh, interesting. So Woodlawn Crossing is um, is oh. on the um, that's on the Woodlawn uh, Cultural Landscape. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. So, so that's a you know, significant. Yeah, thing. yeah. So definitely now, um, you know, do, because it's already on the National Register, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't identify it. Well, but we don't need to serve it, right? Yeah, we don't need to serve it. it. Yeah, that wasn't thought yeah. of as contributing. I think. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there are some other places around there. Yeah. Too. Well, fantastic. It looks like um, I've got things that are missing and, and we'll be able to to flesh out our scope and, and I'm glad that we have this opportunity then. Oh, no, that's great. Fantastic. Okay. Yep. I will send you a follow up email um, this afternoon with the, uh, the scope attached. Thank you so much, everybody. That's wonderful, Denise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions or comments? I have a question on another okay. subject. This is Barbara. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. I just want to know, I want to know, Phyllis, if we, if you've heard any more from Lynn about the video, Audrey's Corners video, and if everyone on our committee has seen it, I just think it's so important that it not get lost. Um, and that it be part of the conference. So I'm just inquiring. Okay, I haven't heard any more from, from Lynn. She was going to watch it um, and talk about it at the next uh, conference meeting. planning meeting, which is okay. later this month. I think it's the 29th of this month. Okay, but has everybody, said, has, has everyone, has all the committee members seen it? Have all you're, of you seen it? You're referring to the one that the young lady did? Yes, ma'am. Yes, the, and Denise sent it out, I thought, to, to all the commissioners. She did. I just wanted to, if everyone had seen it. Yeah, I can't I remember. <laughs> I see some it's people really shaking important. their heads that they have I, seen I, it. Well, I can't see, 
um, obviously. Well, so I, I can't. I, I just I realized urge, you can't see. Right. Um, I would urge that everybody take a moment to watch it. It's just uh, Phyllis and I had a emotional response to it. I mean, it just it just covers with it just covers so much of what we're trying to do. It's it's wonderfully done. So I'm just that's urging great. that you, you take the time. I think it's 20 minutes. Isn't that right, Phyllis? I think that's what it was. Yes. So yes. Um, the, anyway, for, for those who haven't, pardon me. Could it be sent out again? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah. I, I'm sure I yeah, have I can, it. Phyllis, do you I, have it? I can Denise, redistribute do you it. Have it. Yes, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll read it. I'll just Thank send you. it to the to the whole committee. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the poke. By a high school student, um, and it's it's an interview, but she she did a lot of research um, for that for that area, and she actually. When you see the credits to the video, she's done everything. She's produced it. She's she's taken all the photographs and and, and everything. Um, but it's it's typical of the things that occurred in Fairfax County with African American families, um, the communities. Uh, one of the one of the main people in the video is um, a uh, alumni of Luther Jackson High School. But it's but it just it just gives you the it really gives you the feel of what it was like growing up in Fairfax County and some of the things that happened with the communities and the, and the uh, people who lived in the communities. Yeah, and I I for one drive so, that drive that way and um, know of Audrick's Corners as just the intersection of Spring Hill and Lewinsville, and the Audrick Home Place Archaeology archaeological site i had no idea how big it was and that it extended to all where spring hill where the school is where spring hill rec center is um over where the toll road is and there are a couple of very small houses on um uh spring hill as you just approach the beltway i mean uh the toll road and they're obviously a remnant of audrick's corners and when um down from the headed towards the corner from Pleasant Grove Church um, and and Audric's uh, home place um, is where before COVID, uh, Liz told us that there would be a, a, at least a phase one survey because they were going to be developing that land. And in the 70s, when I used to drive that, uh, there were there were a series of small houses there. And I said to Liz in my ignorance before I saw this, well, don't you think that must have been an African-American community? And she said, yes. Well, obviously it was. It just So it's just amazing to see the extent of it all. So anyway, um, I just urge us to include it with, make sure that the committee's aware of it and that we speak up to have it included in the conference. So that's my piece. I'd like to get it on the resources too. Uh, this is Carol. I'm going to be the devil's advocate here. Um, no, I agree with Barbara that it should be included. But Audric's Corner is Spring Hill uh, on the southwest side of Lewinsville. It does take in the other side where the Shiloh Church is. It does not take in the Spring Hill Elementary School and the across the street where the rec center is, that was a farm. And uh, if the name of the guy escapes me at the moment, but that was a large farm and it was not um, Audric Corner. The marker for Audric Corner is in the wrong place and it's been confusing to people. Uh, it should be um, uh, on the other side of Lewinsville Road. But I but, understood uh, that was the only place that we could get it, could uh, put it up. And no, whether it was VDOT or whatever it was, was an issue. Is that right? No, um, the, there's a Lewinsville corridor and that's where they wanted it so that more people could see it. But at one point, and Jack was still alive then, we were, at, we were going to get it moved to the other side of the street where the um, assisted living facility is. And they were mm -hmm. going to, you know, and in the Lewinsville corridor, people said no. They wanted to keep it there where it is so that more people could see it. 
and it's it's just in the it bothers me because it's in the wrong location. But um, anyway, so I'm just playing a devil's advocate. But the Spring Hill Rec Center was a farm. I don't know why I can't remember the fellow's name. Um, but Audric's cornered uh, Audric's property, I believe, also took in Shiloh Baptist Church. But I think. Oh, yes. it, Yes. Well, I think they bought it from the farm from the farmer across the street, but uh, that was just a little strip on the other side of the street. His property ran down Lewinsville Road toward Pleasant Grove Church. I think he had 30 acres in there. I believe so. Uh, but it did not take in Spring Hill Rack. But anyway, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> so, but it does mm -hmm. annoy me. The marker is should be on the other side of the street. <laughs> and it could be that I misinterpreted what she, or misremembered what she said, because I know behind the school and behind the soccer field is part of the cemetery, and that's why she was explaining, this woman was explaining how difficult it was uh, for those with family members there to get back there. Mm -hmm. So on the school side, um, that apparently was it. But whatever, it was, a, it was um, a significant community, and it's an interesting to hear her stories, the woman's stories. Right, right. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just playing devil's advocate, so sorry, Barbara. <laughs> no, you're uh, you're probably right. I just saw it once, Mary? and so that's my memory. Well, it's Mary, a nice... Had a comment? It's not about that. I just had something I wanted to ask Barbara Peters and also suggest to people. As you are, uh, you know, doing your templates and everything, if you find a primary source um, that needs to be collected, like by the Virginia room. Let, let's let's get it there. I, I've just been reminded of a story of a, a church at the Little River uh, United Church of Christ, uh, which is a uh, racially mixed uh, congregation. And when they first tried to buy their property, they were denied when the owners realized that it would be a racially mixed congregation. And um, I've been talking to the people at the church and they sent me the pastor's account of how that all happened and how Omer Hurst and Mason Hurst, which I, I know from the um, Braddock district, helped them get the property that they have today. And um, so anyway, uh, Barbara, I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind me writing up that for a template. And also I'm doing, uh, I told you I'd do, do ILDA, which I've done, but I'd also like to do Gooding's Tavern because I have a whole lot of information about that and the uh, slave cemetery that's associated with Gooding's Tavern. So Barbara Peters, do I have your permission to write those templates? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Actually, as we're, since we're mentioning Barbara, uh, you know, resources relevant to Barber's district. Um, I was reading or actually listening to Nation of Nations, which we've been talking about in the Ethnic and Oral History um, com uh, Committee. And um, there's a whole chapter there about an African-American community um, near Bailey's, oh, Bailey's Crossroads, um, yeah. Yeah. which uh, sort of put, and it's a really, it seems to be a pretty good, um, uh, you know, overview of some of that history. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking that it should be part of our inventory. Also, um, I sent an email to uh, to Mary and uh, Phyllis just as we started. There's a gentleman uh, who's been doing research into the history of Justice Park. And uh, they're going to have a, um, a sort of talk from somebody with the Tinner Hill um, Preservation Society, or I'm sorry, I can't remember what the next exact name of the group is, but they're going to be talking about the history, the African American history of Justice Park on Saturday. So I sent, I forwarded that information to Phyllis and Mary. So if, or you can ask me uh, for it if you, you're, if you're interested. Um, Barbara was going to try yeah, and. I'll be good. Now, where is Justice Park? Um, right near uh, what was. Jeb Stewart High School. Well, that's what I was wondering if, if that's where it's located. Yeah. So, but when you were talking about Tinner Hill, I was getting 
because I know where the Tinner Hill is, and I thought, well, well, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, it's somebody from Tinner Hill who's going to be doing the presentation about the history. It's probably Ed Henderson. It's probably Ed. Yeah. Why? Oh, and Barbara, the James Lee marker is up. I saw it. Really? I yes. Did. Yeah. I don't know, uh, Phyllis, have you seen the Carrollton marker? Is it up? I'm going to be down there on tomorrow. Okay. So I'll ride by and see if it's there. Okay. I know that James Lee is up. I was over there yesterday. I had a meeting with Liz and Amy about cemeteries, all about cemeteries. <laughs> Um, have you heard anything from Norma about, um, I mean, she had been talking the September 25th date, right, and no. I haven't seen anything about it. No, I haven't heard anything a, either. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll get in touch with her then this week. And Carol, I know nothing about Pleasant Grove and VDOT. Well, uh, you saved me from asking the question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there, you know, VDOT is notoriously slow on doing these land permits, so who knows? Eventually we'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. And Barbara, I haven't heard anything from the Annandale Methodist Church since I uh, told them about um, looking for some primary they had... sources. Pardon me? I said since you told them how much more work they had to do? Yes. No, I haven't heard anything either from them, not okay. since then. Okay. I volunteered to help them if they needed help, but. Okay. Well, I think they're suffering from some uh, conflict on who was doing what. Yeah. Or contacting whom. Okay, is there anything else that anyone else wants to discuss before we close out? Thank you Denise all. Is gonna, Denise is gonna be sending us two things. Um, one is the Audrix video, and the other one is the survey list, which we have to get back to her, our answers back to her by Friday. So if there's nothing else, then the meeting the is calendar. Calendar says October 12th. Yes. Right. Day after uh, Indigenous People's Day. Is that what it's called now? Well, that's what my calendar. It's not says. Native. It's not Native American. It's called it's Indigenous. Right. Okay. My calendar says Columbus Day, Indigenous Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand okay. that November is Indigenous Peoples Month. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good for the All conference. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll yes. see you at the Thank next you. meeting. Emma, Esther I, has a meeting I, coming up soon. That too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Grace and Denise. You are welcome. Yes. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I couldn't click on anything. Oh, you're so oh, I'm glad but Grace oh, was you... able to help you, Esther. I'm sorry that I wasn't uh, Hi, I wasn't available. Yeah, that's quite all right, Denise. We understand. You're leaving me. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 